Thank you. And now uh, via remote, uh, uh, Senator Markey. Senator Markey, you can, there you go. We couldn't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Please oh, proceed. beautiful. So I just wanted to echo what you have been saying, Madam Chair, that there are critical workforce uh, issues. Uh, uh, diversity is lacking. The numbers are incredible. Less than 20% of aviation workers are women. Less than 10% of pilots and maintenance technicians are women. And workers of color make up less than 10% of pilots and flight engineers. And that just doesn't fly. So Mrs. Ms. Luti, uh, can you briefly describe what your research shows in terms of lack of uh, diversity in aviation in our country? Certainly, I think um, you know you just did a nice job of summarizing some of the data for me, so thank you very much. Um, as you mentioned, you know, there's certainly uh, uh, major gaps um, within uh, for women in aviation and people of color. Um, less than 20% of the workforce uh, overall uh, for women and 5% of airline pilots, 3% of maintenance technicians are women. Um, in addition, you know, you, you mentioned the, the uh, racial uh, gap in the workforce as well. So um, I think you summarize it well. I, I think we also need to address, you know, what the primary barriers are. Um, in order to address those gaps. Um, and what we know is, uh, as has been mentioned, one of the primary um, barriers include things like outreach and awareness and education for young people, getting people informed of how they can become involved in aviation. Um, we have several recommendations, of course, in the board report along those lines. You talk specifically about, um, you know, racial imbalance within the aviation industry as well. Uh, in a survey that was done of the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals, they also showed some of the same similar barriers that we found for women in aviation, such as cost, certainly negative culture um, for women, um, bias and discrimination, sexist comments, and in the Black Aerospace Professional group, um, racist comments. Um, so I think those areas are, are key areas that, that clearly we need to address. Um, but cost, um, awareness, and culture are, are three key areas that um, we can address to help improve the um, representation across the board in aviation. Uh, and again- So that's the way, so that is how you think that women and minorities can be better included by broadening the pipeline, by taking the actions that you just mentioned, so that we've got a strategy to reach out, to include them, and to help them to make it through the process. Right, exactly. The strategies that we lay out, the 55 recommendations in the board report that will address a lot of those barriers that we just mentioned. Um, another one, by the way, that from the OBAP uh, survey that we did that was interesting was, was just a lack of awareness. Like somebody is interested in the aviation as a career, but they really don't know or they don't have enough information about the pathway forward. You know, how do I find out more about the career? How do I stay engaged? Um, throughout school, or how do we keep young people engaged? And so one of the key recommendations we had in the report was that one-stop shop virtual resource center to help inform and put the information out there so that people, you know, when you get hooked on aviation and you get that passion for aviation, you know what the pathway forward is um, so that we can, you know, better um, help people to find us in the industry and get them where they want to be on their journey. And I agree with you 100%. And that's why I'm working on legislation to create uh, and support aviation programs at minority serving institutions and at institutions focused on increasing racial and gender representation uh, in this uh, area. Uh, and Ms. Sudi, I'm sure you agree that as part of the FAA reauthorization, Congress should include legislation uh, for women and minorities to have them be increased in our nation's aviation workforce. You agree with that? Uh, most certainly. In fact, um, that's good to hear that, that that's being worked on because that literally is our recommendations in action. We have a recommendation specifically about funding for minority serving institutions. Um, as an example, we have approximately, not approximately, we have 107 HBCUs um, in this country, but only eight have aviation degree programs with um, four-year degrees. So, so you would support legislation that helped to enhance that? So we need to enhance that. You know, we need to, okay, we need well to create that, greater that access. Will be, that will be the legislation that I'm introducing. And, uh, and finally, we can't 
really talk about aviation workforce issues without talking about airport service workers. Uh, those individuals, the wheelchair attendants, the baggage handlers, the concession workers are overworked, they're underpaid. And that's why last week I reintroduced the Good Jobs for Good Airports uh, Act to ensure that airport service workers get a living wage in benefits. I introduced it with Senator Schumer, Senator Blumenthal, uh, and others. Uh, it's just time for us to recognize these hidden figures at airports who showed up throughout the entire pandemic, ran higher risk of getting COVID, uh, and uh, were not properly compensated for what they did. So we just have to move forward, just make sure that they get the funding for their families. Uh, and that as we fund airports, we make sure it goes down as well into uh, that part of our workforce as well. So thank you, Madam Chair, very much.